I saw this. This this segment came out like three days ago, and I was like, "Holy shit! There is no way I'm doing this segment on my own. I either need CJ here with me, but the best thing possible, we have Carl Za with me for this segment because this is one of those jaw dropping segments. Like this is one of those segments that that really sums up our position when we say the United States is the most propagandized country in the world. So as we know, the majority of the world has turned on Israel. They don't like Israel because, I don't know, something about the world population hates seeing children being bombed. It's something about bombing hospitals that turn off people in their national sphere, right? And you want to know whose fault that is, Carl, that people are against genocide? According to CNN, it's China's fault. So there's going to be a lot to say. Feel free to interrupt anytime in this video because if Surge is only four, uh, th- in less than four minutes. So let's watch it. I'm interested to hear your, your, your take on it. A this. troubling trend, anti-Semitism surging on Chinese social media since the deadly October 7th Hamas attack, terror attack on Israel. The Internet in China is, of course, heavily censored. Posts critical of President Xi Jinping and the Communist Party are usually removed swiftly. So why then would doctored photos of Israeli flags combined with swastikas, as you can see there, be allowed to remain? Well, some experts believe that is no accident. In fact, they suspect that China is exploiting the hateful content to hurt the United States. Will Ripley is out front. As the Israel-Hamas war rages, a battleground of opinions on China's tightly controlled social media. A surge of online hate, very anti-Israel and, in many cases, anti-Semitic. What do you guys actually think that means? (laughs) Do you guys think that they hate Jews on Chinese social media? Or do you think they're criticizing Israel? I think it's obvious. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Right now, the the worst thing to have done is... It's actually anti-Semitic what they're doing. They're equating the state yes. of Israel and the action of state of Israel with Jews everywhere. You know, talking about anti-Semitism, that is anti-Semitism. I mean, the Chinese people are the last people on earth you can be accused of hating Jews. You know, go talk to Chinese aunties. So they love Jews, you know, because in the Chinese yeah. society, okay, I, I there's a, like they... In the Chinese society, they, they 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 love Jewish people because they see the Jewish people. They're educated. They're uh, they're 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 hardworking, and they know how to make money. You know all these value, all these values that the, the Chinese people themselves they they, they 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 highly value. So so if you 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 go to a Chinese bookstore, you know you're gonna have. To, to, you're gonna find the uh, books like or how to how to uh, send your um, how to educate. Your, your children like the Jewish people or something like that, you know, because they think Jew, Jewish people are smart. They want to, they want to emulate that. But, but the fact that, look, it's simple. Chinese people love Jews. They hate Israel for Israel yeah. ha- action on Palestine. It's as simple as that. And what, the, and again, like the, 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 they're not really helping themselves by equating Israeli actions in Gaza with 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 the Jewish identity, that is by itself is anti-Semitism. And, and, but, I'm, but, 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 I'm sorry, so I, I'm gonna say this with my chest out, 100, percent and I'm gonna continue to say it. As someone who's been to multiple Palestinian protests ever since October 7, as someone who's surrounded by Palestinians and people who are engaged in the movement, I will say with 100 percent confidence, I have never ever seen an anti-Semitic comment from these people, ever. And, and I mean in the and, sense of Jewish people. Go ahead, Carl. And many of these rallies I have attended in the United States supporting Palestine, there are many American Jews. There are Amer- many American Jews who are supporting Palestine. And, and yes, you know, like you, absolutely. 40, survey after survey, 40% of American Jews think that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza, right? And like, the, 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 but, but, but these... These people, they are really trying to shoehorn the message that somehow being anti-Israel, you are anti-Jewish, which is complete. And, and to the point that they're they're, uh, they're 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 saying that Jewish Voice for Peace is an anti-Semitic organization. Uh, like the Jewish yeah, Voice for Peace is now an anti-Semitic organization. I mean, this is totally bonkers. And and and, 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 and 
but on top of that, this is a mass off moment. You, they, CNN is among one of these mainstream medias that constantly hectoring China, saying, "Oh, China has censorship. You know, China has a heavily controlled internet." Blah blah blah. But but right, we're right now they're saying, "China, why aren't you censor your? Why aren't you yeah. censor your internet? That's your job. <laughs> Do your job. Censor the internet." Uh, you know what? <laughs> This is an instance. This is one instance where you are the, the Chinese citizens have happen to have more freedom than the U.S. Yes. citizens on their social media. They can they can criticize Israel's actions without fear and repercussions of being blocked or suspended, <laughs> unlike say Twitter or or you or, or being demonetized like on YouTube. So they have criticisms for China for censoring too much. And now they criticizing China for not censoring enough. <laughs> it, and, and it's not supposed is, to make sense. Not supposed to make sense. Yeah, but go ahead, go yeah. on. And this is the time, like, whenever I talk about Israel Palestine conflict on my YouTube, my, my video will get automatically demonetized yeah. by the AI algorithms, right? Like, I have to go appeal. Sometimes it gets. Gets, the, the appeal gets approved. Sometimes it gets overturned. But but we are facing increasing censorship in the Western social media platform over the Israel-Palestine conflict. And, and now they're going to say, oh, that's not enough. We want the world to follow our example of censorship. Everyone must crack. I'm sorry. China is not United States. China is not the West. China does not bear the burden of guilt over Holocaust, right? We don't, we yes. don't yeah, you can't tell the Chinese what to think on this issue you can't you can't say like look we we have not we are we are just a observer from a far away and we just thought it was wrong to kill women and children it's simple as that it's simple as that and if you think they wasn't saying the quiet part out loud enough they get worse they like just in case you didn't get what we're saying here we're gonna ramp it up we already made it 40 seconds in we almost done now. Let's continue. Let's get worse, if I remember right. We controlled social media. A surge of online hate, very anti-Israel and, in many cases, anti-Semitic. The Israeli embassy in Beijing says, <laughs> Matt Trush is a Jewish-American businessman living in China with thousands of followers on social media. For centuries, China has been the biggest friend of the Jews. And until recently, that's now all changed. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Why do you think that is? I mean, China loves Jews, but somehow, somehow recently that's all changed. I don't know what, what could that be. Who knows? Be? What kind of global event? What kind of what kind of military campaign or or any <laughs> event may change people's opinion about Israel? It's almost like you guys did this to yourselves, but let's continue to watch this cult. It gets even funnier. CNN uncovered a hornet's nest of hateful content surging after October 7th. Based, by the way. You guys see people stepping on the Israeli flag? To me, that's pretty based. And I think that's a very just reaction to a country committing a genocide. That's just me, but I'll let you. I, I, that's my bad. I was like, play. I'll let it play some more. It's, this segment is so funny to me. Surging after October 7th. <laughs> criticizing Israel's military response in Gaza to the Hamas terror attacks. So, so are they not allowed to do that? <laughs> They say they criticizing Israel's military response to Hamas. Are you saying they're not allowed to do that? <laughs> While they continue, um, remain untouched by China's usually heavy-handed online censors. For a person like me, a Westerner, to post on China's TikTok, highly censored TikTok, I have to be very, very careful. And yet, these hype, these Chinese bloggers, these hate bloggers, seem to have free reign. Hate Some bloggers. online users combining the Israeli flag and Nazi symbols. Pretty base to me. <laughs> I see. I see. No. I see nothing wrong with that picture. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with. Do that you hear anything wrong moment. on this segment? Is there anything here that you see offensive? Like everything they're complaining I, about is one hundred percent legitimate, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, thumbs up to that Chinese bro stepping on Israeli flag. I mean. <laughs> and the, the, the caption, I think, in Chinese is, this is a pretty good carpet. I agree. Ah, I agree. It's a nice doormat. Oh, that's yeah, good. It's a nice doormat. Yeah. Oh, man. I bet Chinese social media is so good. I wish I can read Mandarin or whatever. But let's look at the news. Posted by netizens, the German embassy in China says the images are, quote, degrading to human dignity. 
and calls the posters ignorant idiots or shameless bastards. Some people. So they're bad because they post about a genocide and criticizing the country committing genocide, but the country literally bombing kids. You have no words to say about them. Very interesting. People buying Israeli flags on Taobao, China's online shopping platform, just to step on them and post the pictures online. <laughs> Even the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum, a longtime symbol of Chinese Jewish history, facing a flood of social media comments demanding its demolition. <laughs> Adding fuel to the online firestorm, some state media outlets accusing Israel of committing war crimes. Oh, no, Carl. <laughs> People on Chinese social media. I don't know if Carl got disconnected. He'll probably return here soon. But you guys see how they're accusing china of committing war crimes oh my god the insane amount of anti-semitism I'm, I'm literally shaking on behalf of my jewish brothers and sisters <laughs> do you guys see why israel puts jewish people in harm you guys see why jewish people want to disassociate themselves from the jewish state of israel Israel made Jewish people unsafe around the world because their insistence that Judaism equals Zionism made people think that Jews support war crimes that is going on in Israel. There is nothing that made Jewish people more unsafe than Zionism in Israel. But let's continue. I'm sure I'm sure uh, Carl probably just had some tech issues. He may return, may not. Either way, it would be great. It was great to have him on. Beijing has not condemned Hamas, but has called for Israel to stop its, quote, collective punishment in Gaza. I won't play a part again because it was mid-pause, but you hear what they said? They said that China has not condemned Hamas, but they went to end the bombing of children. And they say that as a bad thing. Here, Carl, again. Yeah, we, we got to call up. Go. My electricity went out for a second, so yeah, yeah. yeah it's all good. We we bought, we about to wrap up here, so I appreciate your time okay. today. Uh, we almost at, uh, done here. I'm gonna play that last part because you missed it. Once again, okay. this whole segment is hilarious. They, I'll play. It. I don't want. I don't want to spoil it. I want to get your reaction. Okay. Even the Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum, a longtime symbol of Chinese Jewish history, facing a flood of social media comments demanding its demolition. Adding fuel to the online firestorm, some state media outlets accusing Israel of committing war crimes. <laughs> Beijing has not condemned Hamas, but has called for Israel to stop its, quote, collective punishment in Gaza. They did condemn Hamas, girl. <laughs> what, what's wrong with that position? I, I, see, I see that's a perfect reasonable position for, for you know, calling a ceasefire to a, a stop to, to, to punish to 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 commit genocide against children and women. I, I, what what what? I don't understand. And you know, they, they, and they do that subtle media manipulation. They're all like, there's some online poster calling for demolition of the of the uh, 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 Ch Chinese Jewish Museum in, in in Shanghai. But immediately they went to like explosion. Israeli yeah. attacks in Palestine. It's actual demolition. It's actual mm -hmm. demolition of Palestinian houses and mosques and, and the home. I mean, this is obscene. So th there's a viral tweet. I wish I can get credit. It is not my thought. It's a banger, though. It's a fucking banger. Where they said anti-Semitism used to be where people hate Jewish people. Now anti-Semitism is where Jewish Zionists hate. And that's the people. That's what they call people they hate. I already butchered it, but that's not my thought. It's an absolute banger of a tweet. Anti-Semite, I mean, these are the people that Israelis hate. So this is a geopolitical position that people can take that Hamas has the legal right, as laid out by the UN Charter, to resist their criminal occupier. They ain't doing anything wrong. Israel needs to stop uh, engaging in collective punishment. That is a war crime laid out by the UN Charter. That's a 100% legitimate position, and it's the position of anyone who respects international law and actually know what international law says. But if you take that position, that alone makes you anti-Semitic. Do you understand the kind of psychopath extremists we are dealing with? This is my last, that's my yeah. last interruption. I'll let it play all the way through, and I'll get your last thoughts, Carl, and then we can wrap up. This, I, this my, I'll let it play all the way through this time, I promise. <laughs> oh, here we go.
Experts even suggesting China may be using anti-Jewish hate as a weapon against Washington, Ah. Israel's biggest backer. It helps facilitate the Chinese government's uh, uh, foreign policy agenda, which, I mean, ultimately is to see the U.S. as the enemy trying to undermine China. She says recent statements by China's foreign minister Wang Yi suggest an ulterior motive. We have always firmly defended the legitimate rights and interests of Arab and Muslim countries. A deliberate diplomatic strategy influencing how Chinese citizens perceive the Israel-Hamas conflict. If there's one thing we know about Chinese social media, it is very tightly controlled. Even material that is deemed marginally sensitive to the Chinese Communist Party often gets censored. So the relative lack of censorship around this anti-Semitic hate-filled content does raise questions tonight about whether this behavior is being at least tacitly approved by the Chinese government. And this, of course, raising concerns, Erica, amongst the Jewish community in China, that this is now a new reality they have to confront. This guy is for me at the... This guy is for me at the mouth, and he's not even reporting inside mainland China. He's uh, he's he's on Taiwan because he got kicked the CNN got kicked out to Taiwan, so they can't they can't go back to mainland China to report. But again, this is what's wrong with the position of uh, China? What's wrong with the position of the Chinese netizens? They they all seem pretty based to me. I mean, like, the, and the the guy even admitted, oh the the, the Chinese Jewish relationship was very good until recently. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what happens. For, for some reason, crazy, crazy. Suddenly, they just turned on us. No, they, they're they're they, they, it's to the Israeli response. They're they're specifically against Israeli action in Gaza and just just you know just stop that. It's very simple. Just stop it. Stop it. And 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 then, then then maybe you can you can you know people can can go go back to to their life. But but for first. You, it's it's it's, it's mind boggling that the, the guy really is like, oh China, why don't you do your job? Censor, censor. You, you. Yeah. Now do you guys see why Nancy Pelosi called the Palestinian protesters Chinese? And I had a conversation with Misty on the Misty Winston show yesterday, where we were talking about the Pelosi thing, and I asked Misty like, because I was torn, because we know politicians. Say stuff they don't really believe, but I asked her because I can see it. But wait, do you guys really believe Nancy Pelosi? Believe those people are t- secretly Chinese, or is she doing propaganda? I see it both ways. Someone like Gavin Newsom, the young, more sharp young people, they know the propaganda, they know what to say. But I legitimately think that there's a part of Nancy Pelosi. Remember, she's in her office all day, not doing anything. She watched CNN. She got CNN on her cable all day. That's what all the politicians do, by the way. If you don't know. They got advisors. They got people work for them. They do all the work. The politicians look sexy on camera. So Pelosi's watching CNN all day. They watch MSNBC all day. And she know the plan. Your plan is to spread anti-China propaganda. Your plan, your goal is to spread Russiagate. But what happens when you've been doing that for a few years? What happens when you've been doing it for years and your brain starts to, to be riddled by dementia, right? Then maybe there's a part of you that starts to believe it. Maybe they That's- really start to believe that people are pro-Palestine because of Chinese propaganda and social media. So I think, and this is my last thought, I'll pass to you, Carl, that the Diane Feinstein, Nancy Pelosi's, the Joe Biden's, I think Joe Biden do believe they're like Chinese spies in our government. And, and like they really believe it because they're dementia-ridden propaganda puppets. They, they so just start just, to believe their own propaganda. It's, it's not even dementia. They just start to believe in their own propaganda. And the, the real question that begs is, why is Pelosi still in office? I mean, she's like trying to follow the footstep of Feinstein, right? She's just trying to like die in uh, in office. Like, why is Biden in office? <laughs> you know, for that matter, well, these people need to retire. This is senior abuse. Just uh, and Pelosi, by the way, has the best stock trading record that beats any yeah. hedge fund managers. She's a market genius, bro. Are you doubting her? <laughs> Her ability to read the market. She's the greatest investor of all time. Are you, are you seriously doubting Nancy Pelosi's ability to fucking flip some cash, bro? No one better at flipping cash than Pelosi, bro. And 
Yeah, I mean, like this this guy, and also the 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 way they the, 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 that Chinese women they they quoted on how Wang Yi's uh, position is really chi China trying to leverage this public sentiment against the United States. It's like, look, U.S. If you want to win popular sentiment, it's very easy. You can just adopt the Chinese approach, condemn the Israeli actions, you call for ceasefire, and and U.S. can actually apply pressure. To Israel by cutting off ammunition and, and weapon supplies because Israeli military cannot function, go on for more than one month without resupply from from U.S. because they, they have already the operation has gone on since October. It's it's it now it's uh it's it's end of January. They would have been paralyzed without the resupplies from the U.S. Uh, and uh without the U.S. ammunitions. U.S. could stop this, but instead. U.S. is doing lip service to say we're concerned about humanitarian uh, uh, crisis in Gaza. At the same time, handing over boatloads of weapons and ammunition to the Israeli army. I mean, it's 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 obscene. Yeah, well said. And I'm gonna give you last thoughts. I'm gonna just read a, a few super chats I got here in general. I'm gonna th I, I appreciate all the thank you uh, comments. That's my general uh, reaction to those. I appreciate all the super chats. And like I said at the beginning of the stream, the only thing I want for you guys to do for my birthday. Donate to RBM Mutual Aid Fund. Donate to Mutual Aid. And as a president, I want people to swear off giving money to politicians. <laughs> That's what I want for my birthday. Uh, I'll read the Super Chat because Mission Carl. Happy birthday, Nick. I like watching your shows. Carl is crazy as well. We <laughs> he talks a lot. I talk a lot as well. Have a good day, bro. Well said. Um, and this is friend of the show, my friend Sam. U.S. politicians say, I think that China is the main threat daily on TV. Uh, dude, if I had did a show covering all those segments, I would do a three hour show every day. <laughs> like, I had to be careful, I have to carefully select which anti China propaganda I want, want to debut, uh, review. It's crazy. Then, last super chat, thank you, Sam. I appreciate uh, the super chat calling for a ceasefire. I passed it to you, Carl, for any last uh, anything you want to plug. I see your podcast, the Silk and Steel podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm putting, I'm putting, you know. Yeah, I, I gotta bring the heavy hitters on Nick and Night. It's Nick and Night season two, and uh, there was a great conversation. I definitely want to reach out. Uh, usually, then most of my shows not go a little ninety minutes. I'm usually aiming for sixty minutes for this show, but there was a lot to talk about today. So uh, I would love to have you back on. Thank you for coming on. Any last things you want to plug or promote before we wrap up? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is just Carl Zah. I'm a prolific shit poster, so you, you can yeah. <laughs> uh, follow me there. And uh, I do have a YouTube channel as well. It's also just under Carl Zah. And I have a Patreon for my podcast, the Silk and Steel podcast, where I talk about everything about China, politics, culture, and history. And I'm doing a chronological retelling of the Chinese history from the very beginning. And now I'm up to... 541 BC. <laughs> so I still have a long way to go, but welcome to check it out. People welcome to check it out. Just go to Patreon, search for Silk. I'm the first result uh, coming up in my podcast, Silk and Steel podcast. I used to joke how we complain about history class where we got to learn like 250 years of history. <laughs> and like, this is bullshit. Meanwhile, China, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> We can play about 250 years. Ch Chinese students, you guys got like 2,000 plus years. But, but you know what? The problem is that in school, especially in U.S. school, that makes the history as dry as possible. It's like, who wants to memorize dates? You know, how is that relevant? But, but, yeah. you, you like, but instead, uh, you know, history is actually entertaining. I mean, it's full I love of examples history. we could learn from. Yeah, like, like outside the classroom <laughs> it's entertaining outside the classroom but that you know so the problem is really the educational system you know well, well that's 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 the least problem with the u.s education system yeah, but, don't get, don't get but, yeah so, so i i try to i try to make history entertaining on my on my podcast people are welcome to check it out yeah i gotta check it out so i can go all day but i gotta let you go we definitely gotta have a conversation about history i love i'm i'm a big student of history like I, I learned, like I was just, I was reading about the Three Kingdoms like saga in, in China history. That alone, I was like, bro, this shit is crazy. Let alone all the changes in dynasty. I know a little, I know like a minute fraction, but I studied Chinese history for a while. I was one of the 
history binges I went on. But we got to talk about that one day. I would love to learn more about uh, that from you. But anyway, I'll pop you in the back. Thanks for joining me once again, Carl. Make sure you guys uh, check out his podcast and his show. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Uh, have a good night, friends.